Hello and welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This one is part 53, using carbide tip insert lathe tools. And by that I mean lathe tools where the carbide tip is removable. Just like this one, it's a very small lathe tool, but it cuts beautifully. In this clip I'm taking the final cut on the external diameter of a cylinder cover that I made recently. And you may be aware that I'm going in the wrong direction. Instead of cutting towards the chuck, I'm cutting away from it. Why am I doing this? As it does seem quite wrong, but it works for me. This particular tip has done a lot of work, and it's always been used cutting from right to left. So it seemed to be a good idea, once I'd cut from right to left for the last time, to try a final cut from left to right. And this gave a very good finish. Please be aware though, that in order to cut from left to right, the work needs to be supported, otherwise you can pull the work out of the chuck. But in the case of this job, the live centre stops that from happening, and I was very pleased with the finish I got. I wasn't too pleased with the amount of swarf, but then again I did remove quite a lot of metal from the diameter of this part. I made this ornamental stainless steel cover for my traction engine, and because I make tutorials I purposely selected a piece of metal that was too big, so I could show a lot of different turning operations. And now my workshop is in dire need of a really good clean up. But I can't do that this week because I have an MRI scan on Friday and I don't want to stick any pieces of metal in any parts of my anatomy. For at least a year this is the turning tool that I've used in my Smart and Brown lathe and it's a really good one. It is however a negative rake tool as you can see the tip points slightly downwards which means it takes a bit more force to push it through the work. I am using a spray on lubricant which is quite useful but it's not the same as soluble oil. I once fitted a coolant service to this Smart and Brown lathe and it was okay until the pump went rusty and stopped working. Plus the workshop which was in the garage built onto my previous house was warm. But there's no such luxury in this workshop. I do have a heater, but when I'm not in the workshop and the temperature outside goes below zero, the coolant freezes. This video is primarily about carbide tip tools with replaceable tips. This particular tool is a bit special. Using my milling machine, I milled some off the bottom to make it a bit slimmer, and this allows me to use this tool both in the Boxford lathe and the Smart and Brown lathe. In this clip I'm removing the old carbide tip which has got down to its last sharp tip and even that's not very sharp. The tool tip is held in place by this clamp and it's all very clever. The countersink in the clamp and the countersink of the bolt make sure that the clamp is always in the right place. I've roughly cleaned it with a stiff brush and it's looking a lot better but really I should have cleaned it properly. This is what I've just bought, some new tool tips for it. These replaceable carbide tips are not cheap, and not being a machinist, but just an interested amateur, I need carbide tip tools that will allow me to change the position of the tip as each surface gets blunt, and the good thing about these tips is you get six goes from each and every tip. As I rotate the old tip, you can see how beaten up it is. There's only one surface on this that's capable of doing any cutting, and even that is a bit blunt. I always try and buy this type of tip where possible, just from an economy point of view. The smaller lathe tools that I have only allow three surfaces to cut, but generally they are not brutalised as much as this one. It's very important to set the tool tip to the centre height of the lathe. There are many different ways to do this, what I decided to do was machine this piece of brass that's been annoying me for ages. I want to get rid of the hole that's been drilled in the middle of it. You don't have to set the tool's centre height this way. You can use a centre fitted in the chuck and then just line the tool up with the point of the centre. And I suppose that you could line up the tool with a centre fitted in the tailstock. Initially I set the tool to centre height by eye and it was actually somewhere near. But it wasn't near enough, I made some adjustments to the tool holder in the tool post and I got it almost perfect. This is not a brilliant finish because the feed was a bit fast. And the reason for the fast feed was to do two things. 
One makes some rings in the work, and the other just to speed up the job. You can clearly see the centre of this piece of metal. My Myford lathe sits on a worktop, resting on foam pads. Very unorthodox, but it's very true, and it works well, and it's quiet. Underneath the workbench is a drawer, and I made the runners for it, but it's a bit crude. I think I'll buy some like I have in my other workshop. I keep assorted pieces of tooling in this drawer, but I'm running out of space. Moving on now to a different type of carbide insert for a different type of cutting tool. These tips are for a boring bar. And here it is. And exactly the same as the previous tool, these tips will allow six cutting surfaces, which makes them more economical, because once again, they are quite expensive. This is not intended as a pun, but now it's top tip time. This was a boring bar sent to me by a viewer, and I was very grateful for it, and I used it for a while, but the type of tips it used only allowed for two cutting surfaces, and besides which it didn't last very long. And when I phoned RDG Tools, they hadn't heard of this particular tool and didn't have any tips for it. So instead, I bought another boring bar. This one's a little bit bigger and takes carbide tip inserts that have six cutting areas. These take triangular tips, but you can turn them over. This tool comes with a couple of Allen keys, one for the clamp that holds the tip in place, and another one to remove the register where the tip fits. The boring tool came with the tip already fitted, so it's a simple job to fit this into a tool holder, which will be exclusively for use in the smart and brown lathe. This will be great for boring cylinders. After machining that piece of brass bar at too high a speed, there was a lot of brass swarf everywhere. As I mentioned previously, I'm not going to do much machine cleaning because I don't want to stick any pieces of swarf in my person. But after the MRI scan on Friday, I can clean the workshop, which will be a good thing. Once again, there are different ways to obtain the centre height of a lathe tool, whether it's a boring bar or whether it's a normal lathe tool. As before, a centre in the chuck would be OK. You would just align the tip of the tool with the centre of the centre. Did anybody notice me setting the centre of the tool to the centre of the machine marks of the piece of brass that you've just seen me turn with the other tool? The tip of this boring tool is now set to the centre. Although this is a boring tool, at the moment I'm not using it as such. I bore a little way into the brass and then I changed the position of the traverse so that it comes towards me. As you can see in this clip also, the feed is still a little bit high, but the finish is really good. That seems OK, so it's time to test the boring bar at doing what it's supposed to do best, which of course is boring. And OK, this is only a piece of brass. It's not exactly steel, stainless steel, or even cast iron. The piece of brass is cutting beautifully. All the chips are very uniform, and I'm sure they're quite sharp, but I'm not going to try and stick my finger in them. I can't fault this cutting tool, nor the other one. And really, when I look at how much they cost me, with 20 tips, that's 10 for each, not much over £100. Well worth it. Don't forget, my recommendation is try and buy carbide tip inserts that allow you more than two surfaces to cut, preferably six, like the ones I've shown here. And that is it for this episode of Model Engineering for Beginners. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.